Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today I would be teaching you the diameter based interfaces um, that are in uh, the telecommunication LTE network, especially the SGS and MMB part. Then we will talk about the diameter description. It's a base protocol, some, some basic examples of diameter based interfaces and the messages overview. Coming to the next slide, diameter is based upon a AAA framework and hence it is a author authorization, authentication and accounting protocol. As you can see, it is um, it belongs to the application layer in the protocol suite and it has been an upgrade path from the radius to a diameter. Hence, the name the diameter is, is because of the radius that was earlier used uh, and radius is now outdated. Um, the architecture of the diameter is like this. It's basically um, placed above the SCTP and the TCP transport layer. Uh, in, in both of them, SCTP is the preferred one because of the stream control transmission protocol. So, um, diameter application and diameter protocol base, it's, it's placed above the SCTP and T TCP layer. And um, this diameter application is it is basically not an application software application, but a protocol that is above another protocol that is diameter protocol. And each of this application has a unique ID uh, that is identified by a uh, application identifier. Now, so the diameter based protocols these. Are, have the uh, certain defined rules and regulations that are need to, needed to be applied to the messages that are exchanged between the diameter nodes. And hence for the diameter, SCTP port 3868 is assigned as the diameter um, diameter based protocol port for, by the INA. And all of the characteristics that uh, the diameter based protocol have are eventually inherited in all the applications that are based above it so application one two three all so on would have the specification and uh, generalizations of the diameter based protocols into them so some of the examples of the diameter applications on the top of diameter based protocols are nas application network access server application credit control for messaging gaming these all so some of the examples of the diameter based interfaces is S6A, S6D, S13, SGD, SLG and D6A. Uh, they are apart from this also but we are ma mainly focusing on this. And all of these interfaces are over the SCTP that is stream control transmission protocol as a transport layer. So talking about the S6A. As you can see, S6A interface is here and it is between HSS and NME, MME, that is Mobility Management Entity. Um, because of this, uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, subs we can authenticate a subscriber and we can allow the user to use the information, use the data that much that would be provided to the user. So this interface is basically used for authorizing and authenticating the user and also the MME um, this uses this interface in order to inform the HSS or HLR the home location register that where the UE is where the equipment is is currently present similarly a 6d interface is also there while S6D is for roaming and S6A is not for is non-roaming purpose. And in a slight differences, uh, the S6A was between MME and HSS, uh, and S6D is between SGS and MME and HSS. So 
uh, all the functionality of the S6A is, be, is, is with S6T and hence it is completely similar to that of S6A and hence we are moving to the next slide that is S13 interface. It is between EIR and MME. The EIR is the Equipment Identity Register and S S13, it basically, it is enabled by an option licensed feature that is IMEI check. Uh, this is this feature is, uh, is mainly used by the police officials or someone authorized official, government officials, whenever, um, whenever we want that the uh, one mobile phone or the UE do not do not assess assess the EP, EPC or the packet core services if we if we don't want um, we want to block that user if we want to block the UE uh, entering into the network then we can use this interface and it's it's mainly for the security purposes like we have cases of stolen phones lost phones then what we do in order to get get us secured we we block the communication of the ue to the network so this interface is used for that coming to the sgd interface it is between smsc and the mme um, MME and the SMSCs. It is between uh, SMS, you know the meaning of the SMS that is um, short messages service. And um, the main feature of SGD is, is basically that is it first is it is forwarding of the mobile originated short messages from the MME to the SMSCs. The second feature is forwarding of the mobile terminated short messages from the SMSCs to the MME. So these two functions are, are of SGD interface and it is also used for the signaling. So these uh, forwarding of the messages is used for signaling. SLG interface, it is between the MME and GMLC that is the gateway mobile location center and uh, it is also used for the signaling as that the SGD interface. The main feature of the SLG interface is, is the control plane based positioning. And um, uh, with this feature, it enables the client to get the UE location uh, data from the PLM. Like if I'm talking about the LDE network, then, then the geographical area and the ECGI value is needed in order to track the UE location. Uh, and hence, uh, the control plane based positioning helps with that. Coming to the T6A interface, it is between the SCEF and the MME. Uh, the SEEF is the service capability exposure function that is used to, you know, uh, securely expose the capabilities and the functionalities of a function to the network. And, um, and this interface is basically used for the NB-IoT, the narrowband IoT. And it has also two features that it, it supports in the monitoring enhancements and it also supports the non-IP data delivery over SEEF function. So now coming to the diameter messages format. The diameter messages is, is basically in the byte format and it has the one header and the payload in the header we have some versions common flags command code and in the payload we have our data that needed to be sent um, all these comprise of a fixed length and uh, they also comprise of a avp pairs that is attribute value pairs as you can see um, sorry as you can see the diameter messages they basically comes in AVP pairs, attribute value pairs, and, and similar kind of AVPs are present successively in the diameter messages. So uh, some of the messages in the in um, in this format 
is S uh, C E R C E A. The answer to that. Uh, the capability exchange request is basically one one client or one server requesting from the client what what all the capabilities it has how many um, some attachments it can provide like any kind of information if you want about the other node or other field then capability exchange request is sent uh, so I can say it is the first first initiated um, communication between the two nodes then if, if if for a long period of time not that much long but for a short period of time or a long period of time I can I would say a specific time interval that is defined in that time if there is no exchange of messages then DWR is sent that is device watchdog request um, and the device watchdog answer would be sent from the other other node then the messages uh, like credit control request, re-authentication request, if we want to terminate the session, session termination request, and eventually the disconnect peer request is there. So the message flow is, is first we need to make set up a transport connection establishment and then we can um, go on, move on to our messages flow. First of all, we need to request for a capabilities exchange. We want to know what the other node holds to and what all capabilities the other node has as well as to our. So uh, capabilities exchange request is sent in, in response to that. Uh, capabilities exchange answer is received then the messages uh, starts to flow like credit control request re-authentication if there is if there is re-authentication required um, then if for a for a specific time time interval if there is no messages as i've told then dwr is sent um answer to that is sent as well and and any of the two nodes any of the two peers can can request for the termination of the of the session or we can say the disconnect peer request can be sent by either of them and the answer of that will be sent by the other one in order to successfully disconnect the connection and hence this is the basic message flow